There, can you hear me? Oh, good. Great. Well, good morning. Great response. Thank you. Thank you for coming to worship with us today. Uh, today, we're joined by our Japanese speaking congregation also. So, uh, we want to welcome them back together, and we'll be having communion uh, later in the service also. Um, uh, please look in your bulletins for today's announcements. And, um, but one thing that's not in the bulletin today is uh, next Sunday, we will be celebrating Pastor Appreciation Day. And uh, we're blessed to have three great pastors here at Bethany. And so we do want to show our appreciation to them. And uh, next week, there will be a cake during fellowship hour and uh, to celebrate. And w there will also be a basket in the back if any of you'd like to drop in notes of appreciations or cards. Um, it'll be available for you to do that. Uh, today's, uh, uh, we're praying for uh, Japan Mission. Uh, their director is David Verway, and we have supported them for some time now. The two main purposes of their ministry is to evangelize the unsaved and assist the Bible teaching churches in Japan. And their uh, prayer request is they'd like prayer for wisdom and guidance as we seek to develop resources to assist churches become spiritually thriving centers of hope that can connect and impact people in their communities for Christ. So we'll be um, praying for them later also. And uh, are there any other announcements or uh, would someone like to share a blessing or, or a prayer request this morning? Linda. Um, I just have a prayer request for my dear friend, Alex. He went in through emergency surgery on um, Friday, and uh, he had a torn aorta, and this is the second time he's had that. So, um, and it was very tricky surgery. He had a 50-50 chance of making it through. So, but he's a very committed Christian, and he said he's prepared for whatever the Lord decides. So, yeah, so so anyway, he's he's doing okay, but I just pray that his healing will take a while and also that he's in a lot of pain. So just ask if you just continue to pray for him. Thank you. Are there any other uh, prayer requests or blessings? Good morning. I just wanted to share my grandmother, Eileen. She is um, weak and probably on her, in her last days, she uh, is having trouble swallowing and is just overall weak. So um, she, according to um, my uncles, they think maybe she has a day, a a week, a couple weeks more. So she's resting at home. She's got family around her. So please pray for her comfort during this time. Thank you. Eileen. Thank you. Thank you. Mine's pretty similar. My, my father is um, not doing well. His name is Michael Bryant. Um, he's a veteran and um, he lives in Georgia and he's a committed um, gospel singer and um, Christian, so maybe the Lord's bringing everybody home, but I'm just praying that we have a little bit more time with my dad. He's 81 years old. Uh, we got him out here last year, but I keep praying for another year, so if we can make it rain. <laughs> okay? All right, love you guys. You need this? Thank you. Thank you. I have a prayer request at Emily, please. Uh, her father is in the hospital in Florida, and he's on his last breath. He's had a hard life, and and she's my manager at Pilgrim Terrace, where I live at, and there's some changes going on there on top of her dealing with her family, her dad, 
and not being able to go or waiting for that call to be able to get a flight out. So I ask that we continue to pray. We'll pray for her. Her name is Emily. Please. Thank you. Would anyone else like to share? Okay. Uh, thank you all for sharing. Uh, please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful day to come to worship you. Lord, we bring you all those on Bethany's prayer list today. Thank you that you know their names and what they need. You even know those that not on our list who need prayer. We lift each one of them up to you and pray that you would heal them, comfort them, and continue to watch over them and bless them. And for the recent prayers shared this morning, we thank you for the sharing, Lord. We pray for Alex. We pray for Eileen. We pray for um, Tammy's father, Michael. We, we pray for Emily. You know their situations, Lord. Uh, we just learned of it today. And we don't necessarily know these people, but you know them, Lord. And you love them. We thank you that you hear and you respond to our prayers, Lord. Lord, sometimes we wonder what's going on when we see the condition the world is in. Help us to have faith that you are in ultimate control and that you love the world and each person in it. We pray for our country, our state, our county and our city. Bless each one, Lord. Be with our leaders and give them the wisdom to lead us. Jesus, we lift our tithes and offerings to you. Bless our gifts and use them to your glory. We pray for our missionaries, Lord. Be with the Champ Japan mission and help them in their mission to evangelize in Japan and help the churches there. Give them the ideas and the wisdom on how best to carry out their vision. Lord, we pray for our church, Bethany. Give each one of us the ideas and the vision to glorify you and bless Bethany and those around us, Lord. Be with Pastor Derek as he brings us your message and open our hearts for your message, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, please join those, uh, uh, greet those around you as Pastor Chuck and the children come up to the front to, uh, for the children's message. All right, come on forward, children. Good morning. Hey, Sola. <laughs> hey, do you guys, do you guys remember any of the miracles that Jesus did? He died, and then what happened? He rose up from the dead, didn't he? That was a, a big miracle. Right. Remember any other miracles Jesus did? Yeah, Lilica. He made what? Oh, yeah, he raised the girl up back to life, too. Remember, he walked on water, and he fed 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves of bread. And he stopped the storms and the waves, and he turned water into wine. Well, I'm going to show you guys a miracle this morning. <clears throat> Do you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> There's an unbeliever up here, but. <laughs> How many sides on this paper? One or two? One. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to draw a line all the way around. Okay, is the line on one side? Is there a line, is there a line on the other side? No. No? Okay. So, it seems like there's two sides, right? Now we're going to take another one. There's, that one has two sides, too. Wait, let's uh, <laughs> <let's>, uh, <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> okay. How many sides on this one? Still two, huh? Let's draw a line on this one. I think maybe that's 10 or a big Okay, well this one, there's one line, but it's on both sides. How can that be? Is it two sides or one side? You think it's two sides? But if you start walking on this side, you'll come all the way around, and you'll come all the way around both sides. Now, if we cut this one in half, So uh, that is something that even mathematicians have a hard time explaining, how it can be one side and two sides at the same time, and how you can cut it in half and it's still one piece. And if you cut this in half again, it's still one piece. And you cut it in half again, it's still one piece. It's, a, it's magic. So... <laughs> I just want to want you to know that God's miracles sometimes can't be explained, but God is all powerful. And the Bible says some things are beyond our understanding, 
But we can trust that God is all powerful and he can do miracles. Even if we don't understand him, we have to believe because God is all powerful, okay? So you guys can go to Sunday school now or stay for singing. Hi, Awadi Mashta. Natsuki, are you a believer now? <laughs> uh, if you can stand and join us in uh, singing praises to the Lord, the theme today is unity and brotherhood and our needs for, for each other. And so the first song we're doing uh, in English and then in Japanese. It's one thing I have desired, one thing have I desired. Japanese and then in English. Thank you. 
thing that you did for us dying on the cross taking the shame taking the pain and the punishment and then rising again to conquer death we remember you please prepare our hearts for this time of communion in Jesus name we pray amen you may be seated And communion is open to all who've confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, and you do not need to be a member of Bethany Church in order to take part in communion with us. And please, please take a cup and a piece of the bread, and then we'll partake together.
Thank you, Mariko. Uh, from 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. <笑>これはあなた方のための私の体です。私を覚えてこれを行いなさい。夕食の後、杯を Let's pray. Lord, we again thank you for all that you've done for us beyond our comprehension. And yet you came down as a man, put aside your glory and took on the form of a servant to the point of shame and torture and death and then rose from the dead. Thank you, Lord, for doing this for us because of your love for us. We just pray, Lord, that you would prepare our hearts and heal our hearts, especially heal anyone who's harboring any hurt or bitterness, and just heal them today, I pray, as they partake in communion. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And so the Lord... Jesus said at the beginning of the meal, take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please take the bread in remembrance. And then at the end of the supper, the Lord Jesus said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's please take the cup. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for inviting us to this table and for your grace and your mercy that you've shown us. And may we remember, Lord, what you did for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our uh, Bible verse for today is from Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 4 through 12. And I'll be reading from the um, English Standard Version. And it'll be projected on the screen if you would like to follow along. Then I saw that all toil and all skill and work come from a man's envy of his neighbor. This also is vanity and a striving after wind. The fool folds his hands and eats his own flesh. Better is a handful of quietness than two hands full of toil and a striving after wind. Again, I saw vanity under the sun. One person who has no other, either son or brother, 
yet there is no end to all his toil, and his eyes are never satisfied with riches, so that he never asks, for whom am I toiling and depriving myself of pleasure? This also is vanity and an unhappy business. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a ma man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Good morning. Today we uh, come back to our series in the book of Ecclesiastes, and if you can remember back to last time, those of you who were here, we talked about Ecclesiastes 3 and the seasons of life that we live through, the good seasons, the difficult seasons, but we remember that we have a sovereign God who has a plan for us, who is with us every step of the way. And as we continue in chapter 4, the preacher uh, continues on with the subject of the vanity of our labor. He's talked about, Pastor Chuck gave a message on work uh, from chapter 2, and so he continues on with this theme. And it's in the context of labor and toil that the preacher kind of brings up this theme of teamwork, of working together with other people. And I think this is part of how God created us for relationship with other human beings, and it's God's desire for us that we work with one another together in unity. And as we go through this morning, we'll get further into the text, but as we begin our time, please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, gathering us here together this morning at Bethany Church. And Lord, we just thank you for our time of worship together uh, with just in song, uh, for the children's time, Lord, for um, the time that we had um, around the Lord's table. And Lord, now we come to your word. And Father, we just ask that you would quiet us, that you, there's just so many things going on in our own lives and uh, around the world, Lord, and so easy to get distracted. I could speak for myself, but just help us, Lord, to focus and give us um, just open ears and open hearts to hear and receive what you have for us today. And so we lift this time up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now you've probably heard of that saying or that phrase, keeping up with the Joneses. I don't know if that's kind of old-fashioned nowadays, but it's that kind of lofty ideal of owning the house with the white picket fence, having two and a half children, and having a dog. And secular society teaches us to sort of look at what our neighbors have, right, and, and kind of compete. We look around us, you know, you're look outside your house and, well, you know, the Joneses, they got a brand new Lexus. And then I look at that little Toyota on my driveway and it starts to look kind of shabby. Now this phrase was coined back in 1913 with the launching of a popular comic strip that was called, incidentally, Keeping Up with the Joneses. But it's certainly not a new concept, even though the, this particular phrase is relatively recent, I don't think it's a new concept because in Ecclesiastes 4.4, 4, the preacher says, Then I saw 
that all toil and skill and work come from a man's envy of his neighbor. And he says, this also is vanity and striving after the wind. And so I think that's just in our human nature that we, we look at our neighbor, we look at our coworker, we look at our classmates and we think, well, uh, if only I had what they have. And the preacher says it well. You know, when we base our lives on this materialistic mindset, it really is vanity and striving after the wind. What good is it going to do to look at what our neighbor has? Uh, In verse 8, the preacher continues. He says, One person who has no other, either son or brother, yet there is no end to all his toil, and his eyes are never satisfied with riches. And over the years, I've met people who seem to be living this kind of materialistic life, and it's clear that there was something missing, that they just weren't satisfied with everything they had. And I think, There's this kind of idea of competition, and again, I think it's something that society at large feeds to us, right? This idea of every man for himself. Well, uh, you know, if I have to step over other people's toes, but I'm going to get to the top. I'm going to go for the prize. Now, of course, you know, and we're taught we should be independent. We should be an independent man or an independent woman. And we don't need anyone else to help us. That seems to be what society teaches us. But I think what society teaches us in these matters is different uh, from God's plan and his design for us as humans. And this goes back to the time of the creation of the earth. In Genesis 2, 18, we read, Then the Lord God said, It's not good that man should be alone. I will make a helper fit for him. God created us for that kind of companionship. Since having been married and also spending an extended time apart from my family these days, I can testify to that verse, it's not good for man to be alone. In verses 9 to 12, the preacher talks about the importance of companionship, He talks about the importance of teamwork. He talks about the importance of helping one another. And he starts off with that phrase, two are better than one. Two are better than one. And in the verses that follow, give the reasons why it's important for us to have this companionship, have companionship in general in this life. Now, for many people... uh, The coronavirus pandemic, I think, was rather socially isolating. And for me, living alone at the time, I I think I felt that in many ways, especially during those first few months of quarantine. I remember a man coming into the nursery, an elderly gentleman who didn't have much of a concept of social distancing, and he came and he shook my hand, and I realized that's the first human contact I had had for several months, and that was really kind of made an impression on me. And with regards to people who live in isolation, I read an article that talked about a big problem in Japan of these social recluses. They're called hikikomori in Japan. Now, based on a recent survey, it's estimated that approximately 1.5 million people between the ages of 15 and 64 years of age are living this kind of lifestyle in Japan, which is 2% of the entire population. Many of these people are physically capable of working, you know, that age range, 15 to 64. Physically, they should be able to go out and work, but most of them have just hold themselves up at home fair percentage had not left their home for two to three years. Uh, Approximately 20% of the hikikomori attribute this particular lifestyle due to the pandemic. Psychologically, they just can't handle socializing or being out in society. 
And so we see a, an example like that, an issue of people living in isolation, living without this kind of relationship or companionship of other human beings. And it's clear that, that that's not God's design for us as humankind. He says two are better than one. And let's look more closely what the preacher has to say about two being better than one. He says two are better than one because they can accomplish more together. Verse 9, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. As I said, I think this passage in Ecclesiastes is timely for me as I'm away from my wife for an extended period of time. Now, of course, you all know that for many years before I was married, I lived by myself, and I thought, well, I got along pretty good. But after having been married, I certainly have experienced that two are better than one. And one prime example, I think, you know, in that marriage relationship between husband and wife, I think the husband and wife complement one another. For example, you all know that I'm terrible with technology. I mean, didn't have a smartphone, didn't have anything. And now our house has, you know, the lights switch on using an app. And so I just completely depend on Utica for anything related to technology. And so, you know, there are those things, right, that in your relationship at home with your spouse that you realize that having two is better than one because you can get a lot more things done when you work together with your spouse and cooperate as husband and wife. And of course, I think this kind of teamwork and cooperation, of course, is integral in that husband and wife relationship. But of course, we want to recognize that the Lord does not call everyone into the marriage relationship. There are some who are called to be single. And so this passage goes far beyond. I don't think some people want to peg this as a passage related to marriage, and I don't think that's what it is. I think it's talking about our relationships in life in general, uh, especially related to work. For example, you know, if you work in your workplace, well, if you're just a lone worker working by yourself, I think it's different than if you work on a particular project together with your coworkers. I certainly found that in my school years, working on school projects together in a group, there's different ideas that come up that you would not have thought of by yourself. And uh, here in our context, here in the church, as members of the body of Christ, we're called to join together to work with one another as we serve the Lord. And so in every facet of our lives, I think this phrase holds true that two are better than one because it says because they have a good reward for their toil. We can accomplish more when we work together as a team. 1 Corinthians 12, verse eight, uh, chapter 12, verses 18 to 21 says, But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor the, again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Now in this competitive world in which we live, it's easy to think, well, I could do it all by myself. But it's not about being competitive or trying to do it ourselves. It's about working together, and especially in the body of Christ, we see, you know, our church services, we come up here every Sunday and, you know, we give the message and we have worship time, but there's a lot of moving parts that make that church service happen. If Pastor Chuck was the only person here, I think it would be very difficult for, you know, all that happens to happen. You know, we wouldn't have a piano player, wouldn't have, it, there'd be so many different things. And so it's about that the different members of the body working together as one. 
The, pre- the preacher also tells us that two are better than one because they can encourage one another. Verse 10, for if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. It's so important for us to have those people in our lives, whoever they may be, who are there to lift us up when we fall. And I'm reminded many years ago when I was in the Boy Scouts, we did this high adventure camp on Catalina Island where we kayaked around the small part of the island and then we had to carry these kayaks across the island and and leave them off at the camp before starting a, a big hike. Now, our group from, from our troop was kind of smaller in stature. We weren't really physically strong. And so as we're ki- uh, carrying our kayaks across the island, we realized, wow, we're not going to make it. I mean, we just came to this point of we can't go any farther. Now, without making fun of us, without demeaning us, the other troop, they had taller, bigger guys, and they just came right up, and they helped us with our, with our kayaks. And they, they could have, you know, teenage guys, they could have given us a, a, lot of pro, a, a lot of flack for it, but no, nope, they didn't say anything. And of course, it was disappointing, you know, being on this uh, high adventure. It was disappointing that we could not carry our own kayaks, but I think we really felt that encouragement from our fellow scouts who came to help us when we needed it. And that's part of our life as followers of Christ, encouraging one another, lifting one another up. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5.11, of course, therefore encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. And I think we have those opportunities in the life of our church here to encourage one another uh, during our Sunday services just this morning, there were several people who came up and shared prayer requests, and we can all pray for our brothers and sisters in the Lord, and that's one way that we can encourage and lift up one another. And then throughout the week, we have Bible studies and small groups, men, you know, both men's groups and women's groups, and it's during these times that we can sharpen and encourage one another. And I know that among uh, all who are sitting out here this morning, there are just personal friendships that you have and which you privately support and encourage one another. And so especially those who may be have falling, so to speak, those who may be going through a difficult time, we can be there, we can be here to lift one another up and encourage one another. As the preacher continues, he says, two are better than one because they can comfort each other. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Well, I guess this is the Boy Scout story day. But in the Scouts, we have what's called the buddy system, where when you go on any hiking or camping trip, you always got to have some other guy so you keep track of one another. So... One Thanksgiving, we did this camp in the desert, and on this particular camp, I guess a few people got sick and dropped out, and so one guy was left sleeping in a tent all by himself. Now, of all the people, he was the thinnest, lightest guy in the troop, and so during the night, the wind was just howling, and I could hear this faint voice, Derek, Derek. And he comes to the flap of the tent and says, my tent is blowing away, literally. And I open the thing, and I mean, literally, it it was literally blowing away. So I said, well, you're going to come and join us. So he joined us, my tent partner and I, for the rest of the night as the wind gusted and his tent blew away. But I think that's an example of, well, how can one keep warm alone. We really learn the importance of the buddy system and having two people together. Now, of course, we can read this verse in the literal sense, but I think there are also other implications as well. 
when we come together as a body of Christ, there's that warmth that we share when we share fellowship together. Many people have commented that while even though our church may be small in numbers, they feel a warmth when they come here to Bethany. And I think that's a testimony to how we just welcome people to our church. Now, every so often I meet someone and I'll ask them about, well, do you go to church or whatever? And he says, no, no, you know, I believe in Jesus, but I don't need to go to church because, you know, I could just pray at home. I don't need to go to church. But, you know, God's word tells us in Hebrews 10, 25, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. And our Christian faith and walk cannot happen alone. If you think that, well, I can just go off and be a Christian by yourself, you will experience the chill, the cold. It's important that we gather together as the local congregation, as the body of believers, and share in that worship together, share in fellowship together. And it's in these times of fellowship and worship that we can experience the warmth of Christ's love. And finally, two are better than one because they can give strength to one another. Verse 12, And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. You've probably heard the phrase strength in numbers. And again, it goes back to that concept of teamwork, working together, two are better than one. And this verse um, Ecclesiastes 4.12 always stands out to me because it's the theme verse of the Ishinomaki Christian Center. That's the organization that uh, we worked with in Japan when we went over there with the volunteer teams. And as you know, many churches in Japan are very small in number, operating on their own, so to speak, because, well, that church is a different denomination or they have different doctrine. But ICC's mission is to bring the churches and Christian organizations together so that they may be able to more effectively serve and reach out in the community there in Ishinomaki. And so there is that spirit of unity when we come together, when we work together in the body of Christ. And I think we see an example of that here this morning, that we have two congregations, an English congregation, Japanese congregation, but we come together united as one church. Ephesians um, 4 verse 3 says that we're called to be eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And Psalm uh, 133 One says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. And so it's about building that unity uh, with one another. Now going back to Ecclesiastes, verse 12 talks about that threefold cord. And you might be wondering, well, the preacher's talking about two people. How does it become a threefold cord? Now up to this point, we've been talking about the importance of working together together. in in the context of human relationships. So the preacher, I think, here is alluding to absolutely the most important relationship that we can have in this life, and that is our relationship with the Lord. The Lord is the one who makes up that third cord in the threefold cord. Ultimately, It's Christ who has to be at the center of our lives and at the center of our relationships. You know, when you take your wedding vows, the minister reads from Matthew 19, 6, what therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. And so it's the Lord who draws us together in these relationships. Now there comes a point where our human relationships we fail, will fail. We're flawed. We are imperfect people. 
But if we have a relationship with Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that's one relationship that truly is for eternity. Where we cannot work together to accomplish, there is one who can accomplish beyond what we can even ask or imagine. Where we fall flat on our face and we have no one to pick us up, there is one who can lift us up out of the, even the deepest, uh, the deepest depression or the deepest pit. Where we're alone in the cold, there is one who comes alongside us and gives us warmth. And when he draws us into relationship with himself, we're held together by those unbreakable ties. So if you do not yet have a relationship with Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd encourage you to consider beginning one with him today. And any of the pastors or elders would be happy to pray with you after the service. It's not good for man or woman to be alone. Two are better than one. This is the Lord's design for us. It's to be in relationship. It's to be in relationship as man and woman, to be in relationship in our workplaces, to be in relationship with our friends, to be in relationship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And in these relationships, two are better than one because when we work together, we can get more done. Two are better than one because we can encourage one another. Two are better than one because we can comfort one another and give strength to one another. But ultimately, may we remember that the foundation of all our relationships, that foundation should be in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. With him at the center, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for um, just your word this morning. And we thank you for that threefold cord that you are at the center of all of our relationships. You created us for relationship, Lord, and so help us to, in all the relationships in our lives, to just work together with one another, to build unity with one another, but most importantly, Lord, to put you at the center of all of them. And so we thank you for that truth, and we ask that you would help us to remember that uh, just in our daily lives and in our interactions with our fellow human beings. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please uh, stand as you are able as the worship team comes up for the closing songs. be the tie that binds
And for our doxology, let's do the chorus again from one voice. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today, this week, and forevermore. Amen. Please join with us in the uh, courtyard for refreshments and fellowship. Their needs, please come forward. <laughs> 